capital of Italy. It is a sprawling cosmopolitan city with nearly 3,000 years of globally influential architecture and culture on display. In this episode, I'm still in Italy and I am in Rome today. And as you can see right behind me, there's a big Colosseum, the famous one. And in Rome, it's like walking in a museum. Right behind me is the monument of Emmanuel. Fascinating, isn't it? First, as usual, I have to go and find my coffee and then I can start my day. Ancient ruins such as the Forum and the Colosseum evoke the power of the former Roman Empire. is one of the main draws of Rome, the world's largest amphitheater. It was originally known as the Flavian Amphitheater because it was built during the Flavian dynasty between 70 and 80 AD. The Colosseum was a recreational and gathering space that was used for gladiatorial contests, public spectacles, and historical reenactments, theatrical performance and executions, and it could accommodate around 65,000 spectators. Next, make your way down Via dei Fori Imperiali, past Piazza Venezia, and wander into the Trevi district to see Rome's most famous fountain. Now, I'm heading back to the city, but before that, let's stop again for espresso. As I told you guys before, you can find coffee anywhere in Europe. This is Uncle Mali. He is my tour guide in Europe. Uncle Mali is a Malaysian chef who has been living in Germany and he's also owner of Wow Malay Food food truck. Uncle Mali started off as a chef at a hotel in London back in 1978. After three years of working in London, he moved to Frankfurt, Germany and worked at an Asian Khoisan restaurant. Throughout his life, he has been traveling all over Europe. Now I'm at Cafe Napoleon. I've just ordered a special coffee. Um, I've ordered the, it's called Cremino. Okay, it consists of coffee, Nutella, white chocolate, cream, and some pistachio green on top. Sounds great, right? Let's see if it tastes greater. I can taste the coffee, the Nutella, the bitterness and the sweetness, it complements each other. See? Nutella. Mm. The historic center of Rome is very walkable 
and the best way to soak in the atmosphere of the city is undoubtedly on foot where you'll stumble upon incredible monuments. Walk into beautiful piazzas and stumble upon off-the-beaten paths gems. Here is a perfect walking guide for your first day in Rome, carving the best eats, drinks and sights of the city. Rome, Italy's capital, is a sprawling a cosmopolitan city with nearly 3,000 years of globally influential art, architecture and culture on display. The beginnings of ancient Rome, Rome began as a group of villages along Italy's Tiber River about 750 BC. The villages joined together to form a city called Rome. It was ruled by kings for more than 200 years. Eventually, Rome became a republic and the people elected representatives. These representatives formed the Senate, Rome's most powerful body of government. Each year, the Senate elected two leaders who took charge of the government and the military. At first, most senators were patricians. They had family roots dating back to ancient Rome. A plebeian was an ordinary working male citizen. Plebeians could vote, but they could not hold public office. In 287 BC, plebeians got the same rights as patricians. The Roman Republic and its army grew. Rome conquered new lands beyond the Italian peninsula. Its culture and language spread further into Spain and Greece. On my left hand side is the National Monument of Victor Emmanuel II, which is the first king of Italy, Victor Emmanuel. Victor Emmanuel was born as the eldest son of Charles Albert, Prince of Carignano, and Maria Theresa of Austria. His father succeeded a distant cousin as King of Sardinia Piedmont in 1831. No trip to Rome is complete without a visit to the Fontana di Trevi or Trevi Fountain. Located in the Curinale district of Rome, the Trevi Fountain is known as one of the most stunning fountains in the world. But there is a lot more than just beauty behind this famous fountain. The Roman Empire had a unique and illustrious relationship with water. And ancient Romans were skilled engineers who were able to orchestrate incredible feats for their time. Now I'm catching a break from sightseeing and having coffee at a cafe nearby. This small cafe is called Piccolo Ragazzo and they have been in here for a decade. Piccolo Ragazzo means little guy in English. They are well known because it's only two blocks away from the fountain I told you about just now. Now, me and Uncle Mali are having a cup of fresh espresso while having a chat with Uncle Mali of where we should go next.
Cucina, home to the most famous stores like Fausto Santini, Andrea Fabini, and more. This street is known for the best shoe shopping in Rome. It is situated near the most popular Spanish steps and is also one of the most visited places for shopping in Rome. Rome is one of the cities that is filled with shopaholic. Here it is easy to find souvenirs, thrift shops, and high-class fashion boutiques. Rome is also the best place to go if you're on a budget, especially for backpackers. Rome hostel rates are from only 20 euro a night. For families on a budget, you can rent an apartment as low as 78 euros, 100 euros a night. It's filled with the best restaurants and most of them are either vegetarian or they simply don't serve pork or lard. How convenient, right? getting dark, so we need to end up our mission soon. I am currently at the famous Spanish step. This place is a very famous spot. It's where the local and tourists chill out and just hang out with friends or take pictures. It's definitely Instagrammable. The Spanish steps are a set of steps in Rome, Italy, climbing a steep slope between the Piazza di Spagna at the base and Piazza Trinita dei Monti, dominated by the Trinita dei Monti church at the top. This staircase is so famous, it's shown up in a lot of film. Some of the most famous and most recent, Roman Holiday, where Hepburn enjoys her gelato, and the talented Mr. Ripley, where Ripley arranges Meredith and March and Peter Smith Kingsley to meet. The nightlife here is very chilling. People here are very laid back, not like in other cities I've been to. In Rome, even a simple restaurant or cafe will stay open until 11 p.m.
able to find a cafe to have a break. Fun fact, barista in Europe has to sit for a six weeks course in order to get their barista degree. They have a private academy for it. Here they take the job seriously. It's a profession here, not a simple part-time job for college students. How cool is that? Not least, I visit the famous Spanish steps connect Piazza di Spagna. They consist of 138 steps and were financed by a French diplomat. That, the history, how it built. My mission on Coffee Roaster Traveler is about my travel to taste a different kind of coffee in Europe. Well, my journey has finally come to an end. Goodbye, guys! 